For 13 million people, immigration reform is the single most important issue in the U.S. election. As illegal immigrants, they face the threat of deportation every day. And at every level, politicians are targeting them. That's why my administration has put more boots on the border than ever before. As a consequence, many who came here seeking security and opportunity are now coming out of the shadows and onto the streets in protest. But for the millions of people touched by this issue, it isn't about rights or rules, but how to survive as a family after getting caught up in an unforgiving bureaucracy. Leslie Munoz and her two younger siblings know this firsthand. They are all U.S. citizens born in California, but their parents came to the U.S. illegally and were deported in 2007. Their deportation left Leslie and her brother and sister with an awful choice. Stay in the U.S., the only home they have ever known, or move to Tijuana and face the economic hardship and growing violence plaguing northern Mexico. This is a big day at school for my sister Adilene. I have to do her hair for picture day, and my mom would normally, you know, do her like a really strange hairdo or whatever. But my mom isn't around, neither is my dad. And ever since, it's been up to me to hold things together in a two room apartment in the back of the house where I grew up. Here's our kitchen. It's really small. And, you know, this is the part where me and my sister sleep because uh, my brother sleeps in the other room, you know, just to give him his own space. This house was my dad's pride and joy. It's in the Spring Valley neighborhood of San Diego, California. You know, my dad always kept it green, so it was pretty nice. But, you know, we don't maintain it anymore like he used to do it. It's not green like he would want it to be. To me, this house is what America is all about. Working hard, improving yourself, making life better for you and your family. That's what my mom and dad were doing when they bought this place. I'm kind of glad they can't see what's happened to it. He would see like all the work that he did, you know, went down the drain. This is my family. The Munoz family. I'm Leslie and I'm 18 years old. That's my brother Marcos. He's 15. Adilena is the baby of the family. She's 10. My mom and dad are Ibu and Zulma. They're great parents and we've always done everything together. My mom and dad are originally from Mexico, but about 20 years ago they got a temporary permit to live in the U.S. My parents came into the U.S. Uh, because before me they had another child and he was diagnosed with leukemia. And in Mexico they couldn't find what was wrong with him. They just said that he was just sick. My older brother Abel died. And my mom and dad found out they were expecting another child. Me. What if I was sick? Could my parents find good health care for me in Mexico? So after their permit expired, they stayed. Illegally. After me, came my brother and sister. We were all born in the U.S., which makes us American citizens. My parents worked hard in America. Dad became an electrician. Mom did volunteer work at school. My brother got accepted to a prestigious school. I was an honor student. We were living the American dream, but in one day, it was gone. On February 22nd of 07, uh, like around 6 to 7.30, um, immigration agents came into our home and took both of our parents. The whole nightmare started when my parents decided to go before an immigration judge and appeal for legal residency. The day that we left the courthouse, uh, well, we and Marcos had to, uh, well, testify, I guess, about our situation and, uh, well, we came out crying because that day 
was when the judge told us that it was denied. My family isn't the only one that has had their lives turned upside down by our own government. This is a corner rally in Spanish, it's known as uh, Esquina de Resistencia, essentially where uh, one of the human rights collectives uh, decides to call to action a many protests in order to denounce the increased presence of the Border Patrol, of ICE agents. It's a peaceful protest that includes families because we know that those who are most affected by immigration raids are families, family separation. And so this is a way to say we're not going to stand for that and the families are going to be united. They're going to come together and they're going to protest the abuses that are taking place in their communities. What we see is when an ICE raid takes place, usually those who are uh, being targeted are the parents who uh, maybe had an immigration case at one point, filed the case in, in the courts and lost their case. What this then begins to create is uh, a large societal separation in terms of families that are being separated, uh, where children are left behind and their parents are deported to their home countries. My parents were forcibly evicted from the United States, leaving me and my siblings to take care of ourselves and try to hold on to our house. The judge told my dad that our house was worth a lot of money, and if he sold it, we could live well in Mexico. But I am an American citizen, so are my brother and my sister. This is our country, and we don't want to leave. And my parents don't want us to miss out on the opportunities we're entitled to as Americans. So we rented out our home and moved into the little apartment in the back of the house my dad had previously built. And it's been a struggle for me ever since to try and keep from losing our home. And if there wasn't for this small room, I think, you know, we'd be living in Tijuana or because I, I couldn't even afford an apartment, you know. I don't know where we would be living at. So I'm really thankful that we have this. At least we have something, you know. This is where my parents live now, Tijuana, Mexico. It's just across the border from San Diego. But life couldn't be more different from my mom and dad. Yeah, it's a lot of work. In Mexico, my dad can't make anything close to the money he was making in the U.S. So he's had to look for ways to make money any way he can. Marcos helps out whenever he visits my parents. Well, every time that my dad brings wire out of, um, from his work, leftover wire, so, so we can just take the cup out and sell it. After my parents were deported, Marcos ended up dropping out of the great school where he was doing so well. He now attends a charter school that allows him to visit my parents more often. This way, Marcos can help my mom and dad earn money they need to live on. It takes me like two or three days just to get a couple of dollars. This is a pretty strange way for a family to live. Every weekend we come to Tijuana to visit our parents and we see how they struggle to make a living. When they first came back to Mexico, they had to sell their wedding rings just to feed themselves. One of the ways my parents make money is selling food out of their kitchen. We make them um, the chips with um, cheese, so then when, the, when people want some, no, we just give them some um, nachos. My mom is a great cook, and everything she sells helps a little. Since being deported, my parents have had to be pretty creative to get by. My parents started also selling um, old clothes that we used to have that doesn't fit us no more. And like once a week or twice a week, she puts it on sale. The little money we bring in is barely enough to support my parents. And of course, there isn't enough to help out with all the bills associated with our house in Spring Valley. We have tenants now, but the lease is up in a few months and I'm not sure they'll stay. I'm just gonna go here to see if they're hiring. I was three months from graduating when I had to drop out of school so I could work more. That broke my parents' hearts because education is so important to them. Excuse me, are you guys hiring right now? Okay, thank you. I would be the first one in my family to graduate and it was a dream of my parents to see me do that. 
Well, I was actually really embarrassed, you know, to admit that I didn't get to graduate. Uh, you know, people think I did, and, you know, I say yes because I'm actually really, really embarrassed. If my teachers were to know, you know, I think they would be disappointed. Because I'm the oldest, I have to be both mom and dad for my brother and sister. I didn't think I was going to be a mom at 18. <laughs> and with two grown kids already. I've had help from relatives and government programs. <coughs> this is the part I think is so stupid. Before my parents were deported, we were never on any kind of welfare. By getting rid of my parents, the government made us dependent on them. Bring your chin down just a little more. We didn't even have the money to pay for the dinner school pictures. She was really upset when I told her she wouldn't have a class picture this year. All right, big smile. But someone helped us out with the money, so she's pretty happy today. Big smile. And you are done. When we stay with my parents, it's hard to imagine that once we all live together in a big house where we each had our own room, we took a lot of things for granted. When my parents left Mexico, I'm sure they never expected having to live like this again. When I go to the USA, see, I have uh, 22 years. And I come back to Mexico, I have 42 years. It's a lot of different. Seeing how we used to be a year and a half ago and seeing how we are now, it just, it, I think it's unfair. And I hope, hopefully it doesn't happen to anybody else. And, I do cry and I cry by myself and because I try to be the strong one. I try to be the one that, you know, doesn't cry in front of my brother or my sister or even my mom. I, but I do cry by myself sometimes when I really need my mom. We've all shed a lot of tears and we've prayed to be reunited as a real family back in the house in Spring Valley. We're still waiting for our prayers to be answered. Somos humanos imperfectos y cometemos errores a cada instante. Gracias por la vida, no lo merecemos. Humildemente te lo pedimos en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén. When your parents live on the other side of an international border, getting there can take a while. I like it because, you know, I get to see my parents and everything, but it's about a two-hour drive and transportation to get here. So it's a hassle, all right? At least Marcos and Adilene are together, and my parents will be waiting for them on the other side. If I could, I would drive all of us to Mexico whenever we come to see mom and dad. But I haven't been able to keep up with the insurance payments on our car and I'm not willing to break the law. It's just not how I was raised. Tijuana is a dangerous city. In the past year, over 700 people have been murdered on the streets. And riding the bus at night scares me. Before my parents got deported, I never even used public transportation in San Diego. It's something my mother would never approve of. It'll be great to see my parents, but it won't be easy. I'm at a point where I don't know how much longer I can keep things together financially. People cross the border all the time to see family on the other side. I don't know how many of them are going to visit family members who got deported, but I've been told there are over three million children who are American citizens with at least one parent who doesn't have legal status in the U.S. Okay. Yes.
We've actually talked about whether my parents should sneak back across the border. But my dad doesn't want to break the law again. He wants to do things right. He wants to keep paying his American bills and taxes, even if he's not in the U.S. It's 1.13. I'm going over the bills with my mom and dad. Which ones can wait? Which ones we have to pay right away? He said that there's only bills, bills, and no money. The big one is for the mortgage on the house. It's more than $2,000. Yeah, because I guess if we don't pay these, you know, they take our home away. And we haven't paid the house insurance for, you know, for fires. After fighting for so long to save the house, it's hard for my parents to accept that we might actually lose it. No es lo material lo que importa, sino sino el esfuerzo, el el trabajo. She says it's not the material stuff that matters. Is the hard work they put in. Todos nuestros sueños y todo. Other dreams and hopes, you know, it, it all stayed in that house. So, yeah. Well, yo pienso que no más cuando los problemas están hay que enfrentársela. He said that, well, the only thing that he can do is just, you know, wake up to reality. First time that my mom saw these pictures with the music on the background, it made her enter emotionally, so it made her cry because of the good memories. She still does, every time. It makes her sad watching the pictures where Leslie comes out happy with her friends and now she's sad and stressed out. She used to play field hockey but that day that my parents were deported came and she had to stop to being a grown second mom because she had to go and pay the bills, take care of us, take us to school. I sometimes think that like the government has like in other words, betrayed me because I'm I am a citizen, and I think I should have the right to have my parents. I understand that they deport people that are criminals, and that is you know the law. And for me, that's fine. You know, deport criminals that are a threat to our country, but people who contribute to the country, people who pay their taxes, people who do good things, I don't think they should be deported, and that's what they did to my parents, and it was not fair. I have the right to be here. I'm a citizen, but if I lose my home, I would have to go live with my parents, and I don't want to. Sometimes I do just, you know, get frustrated, mad, angry, probably all the emotions at the same time. Yeah. Unless something drastic changes, it seems like we will have to live like this for some time. The court order that deported my parents said they couldn't even apply to return to the U.S. for 10 years. Maybe a congressman or a senator could help us. Or maybe the new president will change immigration policies. At least for now, it doesn't look like we have many options. If we really have to wait 10 years before the government will take another look at our case, we'll be even less of a family than we are now. We don't have a family with us. Who, who's gonna show us our values and who's gonna raise us? You know, it's only our parents, nobody else. I think of Adilene. When I was her age, my mother was there every <laughs> night to help me with my homework and pick out my clothes for the next day. She was only eight when she saw her mom and dad taken away in handcuffs. When my parents were deported, um, I was um, hugging my mom. So then an immigration came and he took me away from her. Like he pushed me. So then I started crying and crying. So then my cousin came, he hugged me and then um, it was nighttime that my dad ha got handcuffs. Then they took them different cars. It's absolutely shameful that uh, minors would have to face this sort of decision, you know, whether they stay here with one, one parent and the other parent is deported or both of their parents are deported and they stay here with relatives 
or whether they have to make that difficult choice of moving to their parents' home countries and in some cases not knowing the language, not being accustomed to traditions and are facing a possible traumatic experience that could set the pace in a negative way for the rest of their lives. It's Sunday afternoon, the worst day of the week for my family. When I'm here on Fridays, I feel like so happy. Well, when I leave on uh, Sundays, I feel so sad because I'm not with them anymore. Walking to the border crossing is a weekly ritual. It's one last chance to be like most other families, at least for another couple hundred feet. My sister, that's what my mom likes to see, you know, that my sister is always happy, and especially when she's with them. She only gets to spend like two days with their parents, and then she has to go back. My mom and dad are proud of the way we've handled the nightmare that started on February 2007. They've always taught us that no matter how difficult things are, giving up isn't the answer. But this was America. Did you actually want people to be treated that way in, in America? So I'm back in school, if you're an American working citizen. to get my high school diploma. It hasn't been easy no. taking on another obligation. And what we did during World War II, we took Americans of Japanese descent and we took them away from their homes. But I'm glad to be they back in the classroom, learning the about the history of my country they had, they, they and how other citizens have struggled against dogs. injustice. These are human beings. A good portion of them were Americans. And because they were of Japanese descent, these are the things they did to them. They put them in horse stalls. A lot of Japanese Americans who went to the internment camps had to sell their homes for a fraction of what they were worth. I think I know how they must have felt, abandoned by their own government. And yet they were American citizens. And the government said that they were doing this for their own good. My parents may have stayed in the U.S. illegally, but they taught me that as an American, Anything I can dream, I can achieve. My whole family is living proof of that. My dream is that someday the Munoz family will be together again, living the way a family is supposed to, together.